is Edward O'Mara, and this is the Rot Gut Review. And before we get started today, I want to remind everybody to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Ding! So you know when we're putting up content. Because we're putting up content Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and a live stream Thursday. Plus a live stream over on Twitch on Sundays. So if you're on Twitch, uh, go check us out there. Rotgut underscore review. Also, we just started our competition, Swillmageddon, where people are competing to make the worst whiskey blend they possibly can. So if you're interested in competing, go watch this video. It's somewhere. To learn how to enter and how to send us your blend. But today, we are going to get back to an old series we we're doing called The Bottom Shelf Bonanza. This was a series I was doing with my old man, Mike. Unfortunately, uh, we're not really filming with him right now due to the COVID issues, and we kind of got interrupted in this series, which sucks. But even though he's not here, I am going to continue along unabated, un something on another thing i can't think of words to i'm gonna keep doing it i'm gonna keep doing it so what i realized is we never talked about old crow which i feel like is really a mistake on our part old crow is a bottom shelf mainstay so old crow is named for dr james crow uh, who, of course, is famous for being the very first person to be both a raven and a physician. No, but uh, actually, he was a uh, doctor and a chemist who was uh, actually born in Inverness, Scotland, seat of the Highlands. And uh, he was educated at Edinburgh. Eventually, he came to America and became very involved in making whiskey here. Now... This is kind of an apocryphal story because no historical records really exist indicating that this actually happened. But the story goes that he was the one who invented the sour mash in whiskey production. Sour mashing is where you're taking some of your spent mash, also called backset or stillage, and you're adding that to your new mash. Because the backset or the spent mash or the stillage is very high in acidity, it brings the pH down and makes sure that a bunch of weird bacteria can't grow in your new mash and make it all funky and effed up. Also, now your yeast can eat up all the dead yeasty beasties that were left over in your spent mash. Now that's not to be confused with what sour mashing is in brewing. That's a different thing. Sour mashing in brewing is actually meant to make sour beer. So you're actually making like a, a sour tasting beer. That's that's not what you're doing in whiskey. Um, sour mashing and brewing, you're trying to get lactic acid bacteria to produce a little bit of lactic acid and make the flavor more sour. Not the case in whiskey. Sour mash does not refer to the flavor of the whiskey itself. There can be a little bit of confusion there because they both use the term sour mash, but two different processes. Anyway, whether or not Dr. James Crow actually invented sour mashing, we do know that he was a very prolific whiskey maker from about the 1830s-ish up until his death in 1856. He uh, worked for what was at the time the old Oscar Pepper distillery, now known as Woodford Reserve, and he actually had Crow whiskey. When it was aged, it was called Old Crow. When he died in 1856, his original recipe and his original techniques kind of died with him. So the product we have today probably doesn't taste anything like what he was making. At this point, Old Crow is owned by Beam Suntory. Jim Beam bought up National Distillers, who held the rights to Old Crow, and now they're making it with the Jim Beam mash bill and yeast. It's a three-year-old whiskey, obviously, aged in new charred oak because it's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Why don't we take a smell? So we had this on a stream a while back talking about decent whiskeys you can find in plastic handles, which this definitely is. Um, it's really not awful. It's really not bad. And, and for a plastic handle whiskey, very cheap. I don't remember the price. Future Eddie's putting it up right now. It's really not bad. It's really not bad. Um, the nose, anyway. I'll, I'll say that much. 
it's kind of a waxy, walnutty, yeah, what waxy walnut almond meal kind of thing. It's not too sweet on the nose. It really doesn't have a lot of fruity notes or anything. It's not got a whole lot of caramel. It's maybe a touch of caramel, maybe a touch of something, something kind of orchardy. Maybe, maybe there's just a touch of something like apricotty, but not really. It's mostly just nutty. It's mostly just kind of a nutty, oaky mix. Almonds, walnuts, a little bit of oak, really nothing more going on there, which it doesn't really have to do anything more than that. This kind of, it's kind of just made to be cheap and mixed with Coke, right? So yeah. The taste is actually worse than the nose. It, it has a weird bitter finish. I gotta say it tastes like a better bourbon was thinned down. Now I gotta say, it's dry. I like a dry bourbon. I don't like my bourbons being super sweet with all that wood sugar and the and the super super fructosey kind of taste and stuff. I do like the cherry notes though. This doesn't have any cherry notes. This really is straight up dry, nutty almond meal. Maybe just like it's like a old timey marzipan where it's like almost all almond meal and then they put in like one grain of sugar <laughs> right at the end is like that's candy that's that's candy 1800s candy it's got one grain of sugar it'll rot your teeth you know it tastes like a better bourbon got cut you know with something a little nasty you know or like it was watered down which kind of makes sense it is at you know the big 40 percent alcohol 80 proof it's thin it's thin it's not undrinkable though. It's not undrinkable though. It's definitely made to be mixed with your Cokes or whatever. So that's what they're going for. They're making they're making a bargain basement cheapo thing. That's okay. That's okay. Now, does that really respect the legacy of Dr. James Crow and what he may or may have not contributed to the industry? Yeah, not really. We're not exactly making an amazing whiskey to pay tribute to Dr. James Crow. Uh, but you know what? For a cheap, nice plastic handle, it's not bad. It's not bad. So I gotta say, maybe not a bottom shelf bonanza, but certainly not a bottom shelf bust. So that's something. And you know what? At least the name of James Crow continues on into the 21st century, even if it is in a somewhat adulterated form. So until next time, this has been the Rock Cut Review. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, make sure to catch our live stream tomorrow. Yep, this is coming out on Wednesday. So tomorrow will be our live stream. And uh, Friday, Erica will be, will be back to do a review. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay rotten.